The Wicklow Mountains, while only 10 miles south of Dublin, feel remote, remote enough to have been a handy refuge for the Irish who opposed English rule. 200 years ago, when the frustrated British built this military road to flush out those rebels, the area became more accessible. Now this same road takes nature lovers through some of Ireland's richest scenery. My friend and local guide, Dennis O'Reilly, who leads tours through this area, is joining us as we explore the Wicklow Mountains. Glendalough, which means Valley of the Two Lakes, hides Ireland's most impressive monastic settlement. This is St. Kevin's Church, a beautiful structure. St. Kevin came here in the sixth century and he lived by the upper lake in a cave. And the monastery St. Kevin founded flourished despite repeated Viking raids throughout medieval times. A thousand years ago, in an Ireland without cities, monastic communities like this one here at Glendalough were mainstays of civilization. They kept literate life alive and provided a foundation for rural Irish society. Today, Ireland is dotted with evocative reminders from this age of saints and scholars. The age of saints and scholars was when the rest of Europe was in the Dark Ages, but we in Ireland had all the scholars. And they were <laughs> and here. The saints too. And the saints. And they were here working away, making the manuscripts that we have now in our museums. While it was later abandoned and ruined, pilgrims kept coming. This might have something to do with the fact that the Pope said seven visits to Glendalough had the same indulgence value as one visit to Rome. Round towers were standard features in early Irish monastic settlements. They functioned as beacons for pilgrims, bell towers, and places of final refuge when Vikings came a knocking. Just a few miles from all this rugged beauty are the meticulously kept gardens of Powers Court, Ireland's finest. With much of it created during the Victorian era, the mid-1800s, the gardens of Powers Court are called the grand finale of Europe's formal gardening tradition, probably the last great garden of its size and quality ever created. For 350 years, the Viscounts of Powers Court developed this garden. The statuary was collected from palaces throughout Europe. A flyer lays out a good walk for visitors. With the dramatic summit of the great Sugarloaf Mountain as a backdrop, this garden is a well-watered aristocratic fantasy. <laughs> 